Welcome back to another episode of On the Sofa with Sophie. I am Sophie Weed, and on this week's episode, we have Mr. Pearly, the A-Push teacher. <laughs> Mr. Pearly, it's your first year teaching, and we have made it to February. How are you feeling? I'm standing. Um, sleep is a very scarce resource at this point, but it is February. Um, May is fast approaching, and after May, it's all downhill. So yes, also spring break is what, six weeks away? Yeah. Not that I'm counting. How would you describe your first year so far? Sleepless, probably gonna mention that at least three more times. I don't think I've ever learned the, um, as much in one year teaching a push 20th century as history as a person, as a teacher, and just in life, I don't think I've ever learned as much. And yeah, that's honestly how this year's been. Was there anything that shocked you, becoming a real teacher to being just a student teacher? It was a nice transition because I was student teaching with Sherwin last year, um, and it was like we're in the same classroom, mm -hmm. everything's the same, same procedures, honestly. I think the shocking thing is just having my own like kiddos mm -hmm. and like the idea that like wow these are now my kids um, my classroom and it's it's just it's been really I think that's been the biggest thing that's been most shocking is just like this is now like life like this is my day-to-day -day job the statistic is that teachers last five years the majority of them or they'll get out of it within then within this year and like getting to February it's like the idea that I see myself doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. a lot longer than five years. And I think that's been the most shocking thing is I didn't think I was going to feel that this soon. And you've wanted to be a teacher since sophomore year of high school? Yes. And do you think that it's lived up to the hype? I think it's lived up to the hype and more. I love being a teacher because I get paid to learn. Mm -hmm. um, like this summer, I'm going to be down in Roseburg teaching um, STEM class and math classes. And I'm gonna be teaching kids how to program drones. <laughs> and I'll have to teach myself how to program the drones in order to teach them. Yeah. But like I get paid to do that. <laughs> like it, it's just a, such an awesome profession and it, it is everything that it's lived up to. Like yeah, I've been a student and I've had to pay for education obviously. It's definitely not the same that I now get paid uh -huh. to teach. Even though most of that goes to student loans. <laughs> Zing! Do you think that you have a favorite student? I think there's a multitude of favorites. I think every student is my favorite student, but there are like there's categories of students. Like you know, you're my most hardworking student. You're my com class comic. You're the teacher's pet, or you know, I can have intellectual conversations with you. Or there's different categories yeah. of students, but there isn't a favored student. I think, you know, all my students are my favorite because if I give that status to one, mm -hmm. it would be first unfair, yeah. but it would also be like, I don't know, it just would alienate the others. So I, I, I actually look at all my students as my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then obviously some are have different, I wouldn't say labels, but you know, different categories. What category do you think you would have fit into in high school? Honestly, the teacher's pet. I'm just the student who did the work, turned things in, talked to teachers, but it was like the idea that like, I put in the work, I put in the effort. It got to the point where like, teachers would let me like leave and go run errands for them. Really? Like Woodshop actually. Like one of those kids? Yeah, one of those kids, like Woodshop. The teacher needed me to go run to the store to grab something for his next class period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'll go do that. Yeah. What was your high school experience like? Um, so I went to a very different high school than Crescent Valley. Um, it was a very old school, and it's down in Douglas County. If anyone knows about Douglas County, it is South Oregon. We were a small school. I was one of 98 in my class, so I knew everyone. Mm -hmm. Like I could look at my yearbook and name every student um, without looking at their names, but we knew everyone. And then for the most part, I knew the class below me and I knew the class above me. Like we were a high school of 350 on a good year. Just the environment was not a whole lot of wanting to learn, mm -hmm. just like more social, but like teachers, most teachers didn't care. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say they didn't care. I just think it was hard getting other kids to care to learn. Mm -hmm. There obviously were the select few that we all got teachers to do things. Like it was just like a small town, you know, vibe. Mm -hmm. um, small town school, 
where you know everyone, everyone knows you. If you mess up, everyone's going to know about it. Not a whole lot of options. Like our electives were not like CV, where yeah. this is an option, yeah. or you know, uh, STEM and engineering. It was PE, advanced PE, um, and wood shop or metal shop. Those were, oh, and then obviously you have like culinary and uh, home economics and stuff like that. Like that was all we had. There was nothing else. Like you had all your basics and we had the money for like four or five electives. Do you still keep in touch with other ones from high school? Is it pretty... Like friends or like... Yeah, friends. Okay. Because I mean like my baseball coach who is my PE coach, my health teacher, we still like meet up and have conversations. Like we talk all the time. He's now the principal of a school down there. Oh, nice. So like we talk all the time. Mm -hmm. um, a couple other teachers I talked to, um, the English teacher, he's moved up to Albany. We actually hang out sometimes. He was a younger teacher. Um, he actually was a family friend. And um, friends-wise, I mean, everyone's kind of gone their own direction. Mm -hmm. It was actually surprising. Like, I would say maybe 15% of my class, which is not a lot. I mean, that's like 14 kids went to OSU. Yeah. Um, I actually lived with my best friend from high school. He, um, we were actually were roommates together when we first transferred to OSU. I mean, I keep in touch with most people. Some people I'm just like, yeah, no, you're, you're good doing your thing and yeah. I'm not gonna worry about it. Is it weird to see that the seniors are gonna, that you were a student teacher for last year, are gonna be graduated? Some of them, it's scary. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's like, wow, you're gonna be out in the world on your own? Wow, um, no. I, it's, it's weird to think that those, I, I could have impacted some of those kids' lives and that they are going to be making their own mark on the world. And it's just weird to think that the first group of kids I worked with and like taught, like they'll be running out and about doing life. <laughs> Is it interesting to see, kind of watch students develop and think that they oh. could be good at something in the future? Or? Honestly, like the whole, like I am fascinated by adolescent psychology. <laughs> And watching you all develop, it's like watching, it's like herding cats. Like it's the same like mindset. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting to see. Like I, I'm not gonna like, we're not, like, trust me, teachers don't place bets on like, oh, you're gonna do this or you're gonna do that. Like, or this really? kid's gonna That's do that. That's such a disappointing thing. I uh, think they've like placed bets on No, we actually like... genuinely, can, we're, we actually care about your futures. That's... We actually can, we're actually concerned. Like, you know, and like we care, like, we'll talk about kids from the future like you know when we're when we have like social studies meetings uh -huh. i'm the odd one out because obviously they've all been working 10 years together yeah. now for those the other three and they'll talk about the kids they've had and they'll have these conversations like oh they're doing that or they're doing this or they're this is their job this is the business they own and it's there's act like they actually are concerned about what happens and sometimes there's the the negative they're like oh he act this is what happened or you know this this kid passed away and it's it's really hard for them like it's yeah. not like they placed bets on it and I think that's that's gonna be that hard thing about being a teacher for so long and like seeing these seniors leave after this year is knowing that well they're entering life and anything could happen and they're gonna do whatever they need to do yeah. and obviously there's gonna be great things to hear about it but it's gonna be hard when you hear about the, the bad things mm -hmm. but it's like one of those things that you kind of just like this is life and I'm gonna wish you the best of luck, and that's that's all I can ask for. If you could teach one class that was not social studies, what would it be? I honestly have the dream mm -hmm. of wanting to teach astronomy. Okay, why? I love, I don't know, I love space. Um, in one life, I probably would have been an astrophysicist. Uh -huh. Um, I've taken a history of science or history of space and like science and the solar system and stuff like that. I think it's an amazing subject. I like that it's a little bit of everything. Like there's a science to it, there's a philosophy to it, there's a history. There's so much to it, and I think it would just it's one of those classes that like and you could just the awesome part is like the hands-on stuff. Like let's go, let's go look at stars at yeah. night. And I think Oregon's a great state because you have a lot of opportunities to do that. Yeah. And that's just one of those classes that I would love to teach. I think in like a dream world. Do you so. think that your, um, your kind of nerd side of you for Star Trek and Star Wars is affecting that? No, um, I'm not a Trekkie. 
I've no. made comments, but I'm not. I am more of a Star Wars nerd. Really? Not a Trekkie. No. Yeah. Like, there are some episodes, like, and trust me, people in my past and, like, friends have tried to, like, get me to watch Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get into it. I know I just alienated half of your audience, probably. Why? But, yeah, classic Star Wars. What is it about Star Wars that you... It's actually based, okay, this is going to be really dweebish, but yeah. it's actually based on a lot of, like, philosophy and history. So the guy who wrote about Star Wars, not Lucas, he's the movie guy. Uh -huh. The guy who wrote the original stories that inspired Lucas was inspired by Nietzsche, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fascinating to look at what Nietzsche thought and how that resulted in Star Wars. That's just the science fiction aspect of it. Like, it's interesting to see the connections, but yeah, I'm more Star Wars than Star Trek. That is so surprising yeah. to me. Do you have a lot of fan fandom within you, or are you? No, no. Um, I wouldn't say I have a lot of fandom regarding Star Wars. I mean, there's other aspects and other nerdy things that I'm definitely more of a nerd of. Yeah, and what would, what would that be? I think A-Push and, you know, the kids in my class have found out that I really, really uh, like Rick and Morty. Really? I've I, never watched Rick and Morty, but I've heard it's really, really good. It's definitely not age appropriate, no, so I'm not... Pr definitely, like, like, it's supposed to, like, blow your mind and like, no. kind of be funny. It's funny, and it's not meant, it's not for nerds, it's not for any people. Like, people say, oh, only, only, like, people who, like, you know, do drugs watch that show. Like, yeah. no. It's just, I don't know, I grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, when adult sitcoms were becoming really popular, like Simpsons, Family Guy, South mm -hmm. Park... You know, all those, the classic Cartoon Network shows, which were really edgy. Um, I think that just is something that stuck with me, and Rick and Morty came out, and it was like, this is a show that reminds me of that, like, uh -huh. golden era of, like, animated shows. And sure, I don't care if it's stupid and pot potty humor. There's some fun funny things in there, and I just it just makes sense. Like, I, I don't know, I, that's like, I definitely have a nerdum for that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously like some video games and stuff like that. Like, video games. Yeah. What are your, what are your thoughts? <sighs> Top, man. Any Fortnite crimes? I hate Fortnite. No! Sorry. Why? No, nah, I just lost all of your audience with that one, but <laughs> I absolutely hate Fortnite. I hate Apex Legends. Any Battle Royale can just go. Um, wow, cold hearted. No, no, you got to understand this. When I grew up, it was four kids in the same room playing on split screen. That okay. was my childhood, and that yeah. was like high school. Mm -hmm. um, we would get really competitive. Like we would have the four cutouts on the screen to make oh. sure people weren't cheating. You're kidding. <laughs> no, like we're no, like we. This was like growing up, like Halo, like classic Halo, classic Call of Duty. You know the stuff where you were together and like not yelling at like twelve year old like yeah. tweens who should not be playing Fortnite. Yeah. Um, that was my childhood, so that's why I really don't, like, don't get me wrong, like, online multiplayer has its place. Do not like Battle Royale. Wow. Yeah. Do you have time for any of that? No, anymore? I don't. And if I do, I shouldn't be wasting my time on it. Like, I think a couple weekends ago, I started playing um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I finally opened the game. Like, yeah. honestly, I'll buy video games, and I'll just stay in the shrink wrap, and yeah. I'm like, what am I going to do with you? Yeah. And so I was like, fine, okay, I'll break this out. I played a little bit, and then it was like, all right, I should probably get back to, like, adult stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. have any free time these days? No. It's just always something to do. It's you. always something. Like, if it's not, if it's not grading papers, uh -huh. if it's not lesson planning, if it's not graduate school homework, yeah. if it's not, and obviously there's other responsibilities outside of those, like, mm -hmm. I have a girlfriend, we have a dog, those responsibilities like we have to walk the dog and do that stuff and obviously I have to take care of myself and you know with like exercising working out stuff like that like there's other things you have to incorporate when I think of free time I think of like not having to do anything other than what's other than like obviously chores very limited yeah <laughs> yeah what has it been like being a graduate student and a teacher in the same it's I, okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you, and, like, I'm a terrible role model as a graduate student. Yes, and I'm breaking the fourth wall. Um, do not look at me as an example. This will not work for 99% of you. I am five weeks behind in one of my classes right now. Oh, my goodness. And if I did not have an understanding professor, I would have been tanking this class. Uh -huh. But he's understanding, and it's the idea that it's late, and he's like, 
just do it. We'll get it in and mm -hmm. don't just turn in like, you know, something terrible. Mm -hmm. But it's been hard. Um, there was a lot of sleepless all-nighters last term. Um, but it's like you still figure out a way to do it. Uh -huh. And I don't, people ask me how I do it. I don't know. I can't actually tell you. Yeah. It's just, it happens. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you find a way to manage it. But it's been, it's been extremely. I'm glad I'm not full-time this year trying to do graduate yeah. school because even the fact that it's part-time teaching, part-time graduate school, it feels like I'm working 80 hours a week or more. Yeah, but really. you still find a way. Do you think that you being a student at the same time? Oh, yeah. Like there's this, un like I totally empathize yeah. with what students do. Like I understand like A-push kids are, and especially CV kids are crazy. And they'll take three or four science classes at one time or, you know, math and calc, pre-calc and try to take seven AP classes at one time, which isn't even possible. But, like, they'll try and, like, like some of them are just masochists with how much they want to actually do. Yeah. And I empathize. But it's, like, at the same time, like, I think at the, sa I think at the same time, I, I try to also be very understanding with them and be like, you need to chill out a little bit. Yeah. Relax. You know, like... Totally. There are times where I'm just not going to do anything. Like, I'm sorry I have essays to grade, whatever. Mm -hmm. Your grade's not changing right now. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, and my grade's not changing. I'll wait on my homework. But there are some days you just kind of kind of relax. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important, being a graduate student, being completely busy, and teaching a push, mm -hmm. and even just regular high school is like, that's very important to be able to empathize, especially here at CV. Do you think that you will ever get the opportunity to travel? I hope so. Uh -huh. I mean, being a teacher is nice, even though, like, like we get summers off, but we really don't because we have to, like, plan for next year. Yeah. I, this is an awesome job because we get time off during the summers to do that. Yeah. Like, we have the time, and, like, it's the idea that we have the time to continue to better ourselves as teachers. Like, mm -hmm. the further we go into the world and exploring and stuff, and we're still learning... And I think that just gives us a broader perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think, yes, it would either become in the future, like I would force myself to go, yeah. but I definitely see crossing off the immense list at some point. Good. Yeah. This has been a great interview, getting to know you, Mr. Farley. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Watch another episode <laughs> as soon as we can make one. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Sophie Lee, and this is CBTV.